Well, once again, welcome back. Should I look at the camera? Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Creative Crunch Podcast. Um, and yet again, it has been a long, long, long time. Um, I think maybe we only did like two episodes at the beginning of this year, and then some things happened in our lives, and we just kind of decided to take- No, this is just a once- we do um, a one, two, <laughs> a two episode podcast every year. Two episodes a year, but right at the beginning. And we just, <laughs> we just, it's like an annual thing. We just, every year we release one. It's like very special. Like there's something actually weirdly comforting. It like it do you know what I mean? Yeah, do you ever put them on your TV? No. We do it, we we put it on our TV. But there's yeah, there's something actually comforting about it, even though it's just a video of a fireplace. Do you think the person that made this video makes a lot of money? Yeah. Hundred and thirty million views. But don't they, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, does because your, people literally loop these. Like they just play for hours and hours and it's like so do you a think, second is like. Do you think they recorded it for like 10 minutes and then just re-loop it? Or do you think they recorded it for like an hour? I think they recorded it for probably like. It's probably like an extremely slow fade or something. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just sit here and watch and see if we can see when it loops? Okay, you have to, like, find, like, one part that, like... That, okay, so, like, this rock tumbles. You saw the rock tumble? Yeah, it just, it, it like, fell down. Watch it. It's, like, an actual fire. Like, it never... never yeah, but no, a fire's not going to go for 10 hours. <laughs> I think. What can- if it just goes out, though? Like, it gets, like, hour number 10, and there's, like, no fire left. <laughs> yeah i mean that'd be a long time there's not enough wood on that fire to unless okay so there's a loop it just did the thing again so it's somewhere it resets but i don't know if i want to catch what is that what was that like 30 seconds yeah that wasn't i mean this has been going for quite a while though but loop twice already let's see if we can spot it test Oh, it did it again. No, that wasn't it. It's it's oh. right here. Oh. So so where does it reset? Oh, it faded. It faded. Did you see it? Yeah. <laughs> Those crazy. sneaky bastards only recorded it for 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> They're making millions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, once again, welcome back. Should I look at the camera? Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Creative Crunch Podcast. Um, and yet again, it has been a long, long, long time. Um, I think maybe we only did like two episodes at the beginning of this year and then some things happened in our lives and we just kind of decided to take- No, this is just a once, we do- A, a one- two, <laughs> a two episode podcast every year. Two episodes a year, but right at the beginning. And we just, <laughs> we just, it's like an annual thing. We just, every year we release one. It's like very special. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> inti- it's it's intimate. It is it's romantic. Yeah, we don't want to um, overdo. It. We don't want to give you podcasts every Monday. No, like, no. Uh, once yeah. a year just is once plenty. a year, and you just chew on the information for as long as you can. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. So uh, I think just overall, we decided we're like we have a lot going on this year. Obviously, Ben had a lot going on. I had a lot. Um, we're like, let's just kind of put a pause on the podcast for 2023. Um, to get caught up in a bunch of whatever we were doing. Sad thing is, is we're still not caught up. <laughs> I know. It's probably worse than it was. <laughs> like worse than it was last year. Yeah. So this episode and then one more will come out this year and then you won't hear from <laughs> us until 2025. Uh, so we're at the Marion <laughs> Public Library. Uh, Shout out to Ashley for hooking us up with the idea. 
Shout out Ashley. Shout out Travis. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're at the we're at the Marion Library. Uh, they have a recording studio for us, and I was in town because it's around Christmas time right now. So Merry Christmas to all of our all of our friends, listeners who celebrate. But yeah. Uh, we took the year off and now we're back and we're going to try to be better this year, but I'm not going to put any expectations on it because Lord knows how this goes. So we're going to, we're going to be better. We need people to come on with us. Yeah. We need more listeners to be like, Hey, where's the, where's the next episode? Didn't that happen? Yeah. We need to. Or was it Logan Belzer? Probably. At their wedding. It's like, Hey, shout out Logan. Shout out Logan. They've actually been on, they've been on the podcast. But uh, we have we have some people we're gonna bring on. Yeah. So but we want to know who else wants to come on. Yeah. So if you're watching, listening, Travis, uh, let us <laughs> let us know. Uh, we'd love to. Travis is like our all time. Uh, He's like our dream guest. Yeah. Like we hope <laughs> we hope we get lucky enough to um, work with work with him, get creative with him. But yeah. So you're four. Dude, we've been doing the podcast for, this is our fourth year. <laughs> We're going to try to be better. I'm not going to set expectations. Year four and we got six episodes. <laughs> I think we have eight. I think we have 18. I think we, <laughs> we've been doing this for four. <laughs> Going into year four. Oh God. Okay. But yeah, so we'll just kind of, I think we want to just recap a little bit. I mean, we'll, we'll do some before we do our 2023 recap, but, um, yeah, we had kind of a big year, lots of travel, lots of things happened, and uh, so we put the podcast on the back burner, and now we're going to put it back on the front burner for 2024. Yeah. Does, yeah, that, yeah. does that sound right? Yeah, it's definitely a front burner. We're going to have all the burners going on. All, all burners, and <laughs> it, it might burn. It might burn <laughs> a little bit, but we'll... <laughs> Okay, so let's start it off with <laughs> what we did this year. So the first thing that Wait, happened I thought you was, wanted to play the the segment, the game, the hypothetical thing. Oh, I mean, we can save that for later. There's a, Stick around. There's a game later. <laughs> yeah, stick around and listen <laughs> to what? Listen through the ad. That's how we get our cents. That's how we get our pennies. Have you heard of Anchor FM? <laughs> That's, I'm putting that episode right there. So no. welcome back. What? Welcome back from the ad. <laughs> Dude, I feel so rust. I feel rusty. And it's also just weird because we maybe have like two or three episodes where we've actually been in the same spot and not over. Yeah. That, yeah. It's webcam. weird. But, uh, but yeah. So 2023, let's, let's, let's recap it a little bit. You, you had some pretty big happen. Um, well, which, we first started with mastermind. That you didn't go to. Yeah. Which the second big thing that happened was, because I couldn't go to, like, I could, that's why I couldn't go to Mastermind. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, okay. <laughs> so first of all, we how had a we Mastermind do? retreat. Yeah, how do we do, how do we podcast? Anymore? I don't remember how. We're doing good, we're doing good. <laughs> See? <laughs> Is that recording? See? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so 2022, we were in a year-long like wedding videography course put on by how to film weddings. Um, if it's something you want to check out, look at mastermind. They like, just, they just did their 2024 yeah, opening, they which op- might be open still. Yeah. They, I don't, I've they're only idea. taking on like 35 people. Oh, they said that. I think, yeah. Oh, that's huge. That's good news. Um, um, that's something you're interested in. Uh, go look at the mastermind. And I, I think you could probably get speaking of that. That was interesting out. to see. Our group had like a hundred people in it or something when it first started. Yeah, I think the first year was like sixty. Then our year was like a hundred, and but then this year was a hundred. Even just at the beginning of our year, it went from like a hundred, and then at the end, it was like there wasn't very yeah t- twenty five people active, thirty yeah. people active. I mean, a lot um, like there was like eighty people at the retreat that you weren't at, but so I'll give it. I'll give it to them. They're they're trying to refine it. They're yeah. We were we were part of the course in the early stages. Um, which obviously there's always going to be kinks and stuff. Like look at our podcast for the last four years. Like we've only had 18 episodes and we're just still, learning. we're still refining. We're yeah, still yeah, refining. Yeah. We're still figuring it out. Um, but yeah, go look at mastermind, how to film weddings. It's good stuff. Um, I don't know what really, what a, like what stage of your career they're looking for. 
Um, like if you're a beginner or intermediate or you've been advanced for a while or whatever, but, uh, um, yeah, to start the 2023 year in January, I went to, uh, California. What? I'm just thinking, I was thinking about mastermind and, um, you were mentioning like, I don't know what age or what age, teen, <laughs> what kindergarten, age group? kindergarten, first grade. You're looking for 12 year olds to join this group. <laughs> no, I, I was thinking of the experience level and. I was just going to say, from my experience, I probably got out of all of the classes and everything that took away from that course, the knowledge was probably, I probably gained, of all the information that we were given, I'd probably say 5 to 10% was knowledge that like I you, didn't know. Like useful? That, yeah, 5 to 10% was useful knowledge for me. Like, it actually, I learned something, and there's things that I still do today because of it. But the other 90%, I felt like like we'd get through it in a meeting, and I'm like, I felt like I knew everything that was from that meeting. But I think the biggest thing that I got from that course, luckily for me, I got to go to the retreat, but it's like the people that I got to meet, yeah. I made some lifelong friends from it. Um, but, yeah, it's probably like 5 to 10% of the actual educational part. Um, was like useful knowledge, but you and I have been doing this for a while and there was people in the course that had, were like just beginning. So it is hard to build a structured course to hit everyone, hit the beginners, hit the intermediate, hit the advanced, hit, you know, all that stuff. So hopefully with them dropping down their, their enrollment to 30 something, hopefully it's more specified to where you're at in your, in your journey as a wedding filmmaker. But, um, so yeah, I mean, that was all actually 2022, uh, but to start the year of 2023, we had our mastermind retreat out in Palm Springs, California. Um, ben was unfortunately not able to go because he had a baby on the way, um, and obviously didn't want to mer- didn't, didn't want to miss the birth of his first child. Yeah, it's too risky. Which makes sense. I'm, I'm I'm glad you didn't, even though she wasn't born uh, while we were there. But um, yeah, that's how I started my year, uh, meeting all these all these people that were in the course hanging out in California. And actually this next March, uh, Ben and I, Ben is going to get the chance to meet a lot of the guys that yeah. I connected with, um, out in Colorado Springs. We're all going to do like, they're, a, they're throwing a pity party for me not being able to go last year. So it's a yeah. retreat. Ben's retreat. No, uh, yeah. None yeah, of us yeah. actually <laughs> liked each other, yeah. but we just, ah, we really feel bad for the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just doing it all over again. So, yeah. But yeah. So that's how I started my year in 2020 three um and i think we got one episode out after that and then ben had a pretty big uh yeah so then at the end of january i had a daughter uh that was a very big moment and it's weird to think that it it's almost at that year mark now um i feel like my uh routine my everything has just completely changed since then um just priority shift and um yeah it's i feel like it's too hard to even wrap my head around like the fact that you have a daughter now well i mean that it was what it was like having a daughter just thinking about how much the right routine has changed and um i remember thinking okay i'm gonna have a daughter i'm gonna i'm gonna be able to do it i'm gonna be able to get work done when i'm with her um but it's so hard, not only because she's, I mean, she's at that age now where she's constantly wanting to move and she's almost walking. And um, I can only keep her in like a, a room by herself for a certain amount of time before I need to like go check on her and make sure she's okay. Because um, they're at that age where they're putting everything in their mouth. Mm. Um, and you have like a, like a, boxed off area right that you'd like yeah a cage we have a cage <laughs> just, for you just leave her on the stairs <laughs> be careful <laughs> going down um he's got to work <laughs> but i just the even when i am sitting on the couch while she's playing on the floor and stuff and i have my computer it's hard because i'll see her look at me and when my attention is fully focused on my computer i almost feel bad because i feel like i need to that she's at that age where she's just starting to like learn sequences like 
when one thing like she's starting to see how things connect. So I don't want her to think, oh, Ben values his phone or his computer more than he values me. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's hard to even think about trying to do work when she's with her. But so right now my work schedule is working at night. Um, except for now we just started daycare, which is oh my god, huge. It's a painful thing to pay, like when you first yeah. do it, but um I now I'm like, why didn't we do this a long time ago? Um and the place that we go to, it's called Kinder Care, and they like send us like photos throughout the day of like her doing stuff. Is that from today? Um yeah, it's from today. And then she just says, Cheese. Someone just said cheese and Oh. Seeing that uh, just makes me incredibly happy. Probably makes it easier through the day just to. Yeah, seeing that she's. Yeah. And socializing too. There's like other kids, um, like other kids that are there that she's socializing with them. And so she's not going to um, just grow up uh, thinking she's like the only kid. Um, eventually, Lauren and I would like to have more kids, but. Um, maybe they're. Uh- Maybe they're working up on their own podcast at Kindercare. Or in, oh, maybe. Or Eventually we'll friends. bring her on when she can talk. It'll be a messy episode. But um, she can scream right now, I think. Yeah, so it's today she mom. had applesauce, puffs, rest of banana, blueberry, oat pouch, and she had a wet diaper. So, yeah. For lunch? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Yeah, maybe look at something else if they're feeding her that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's cool. They like send you updates and they have like activities and super nice. So now I feel like I actually have, I can get work done during the day. Now I'm still trying to play and catch up. So I'm, I'm working during the day. And then, uh, when, when I go get Lucy or when mom gets, Lauren gets Lucy, we'll, uh, we both kind of play with her when she gets home. And then when we put her to bed, then I go back to work. Yeah. It sucks. But. You'll get there though. You'll 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 get out of your. I remember feeling like I was like close to getting out of the hole, and then I felt like it just got all of a sudden just got way backed up again. Um, well, yeah, finishing up twenty twenty two. Yeah, but um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully I don't die feeling like I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't feel like I see like I can't see the end. I feel like the end is not within reach right now. Hopefully I don't <laughs> die feeling like I feel not. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, dude. Hopefully you don't die. I feel like that's a perfect representation though of our job as a wedding videographer. The stress yeah. that it brings. It's so fun, but it's also so stressful. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what though. It's, it's, let's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tell you what though, it, it's it's been, uh, I mean, it's been fun to see you and Lauren take on that like parenting role. I know I'm not obviously I'm in Des Moines and you you guys are here, so I don't see you that often. But we do talk frequently, and even though it maybe had been put, you know, took a toll on your your workflow, your editing, your your career or your career, your business or whatever. But like, I mean, obviously, like having a kid, that's a, that's a huge deal. And it's, it's a good excuse to maybe take a step back and slow things down a little bit. Yeah. Um, especially at the newborn to, I don't know, what'd you call, what do you say next infant stage? I don't know. Is she an infant or newborn, she's still a newborn? Infant. I think she's an infant still. She's a baby. I don't know. I don't know. She's a baby. I, don't, I don't know. She's almost a year old. I got to ask. Maybe a toddler almost. I feel like toddlers. Like two. Three. I feel like, I don't know. Is yeah, that yeah. too? She'll be walking around. And she'll be talking. I don't. I don't know. We should bring on a baby expert. <laughs> Dude, you're just gonna say bring on a baby. And are you a toddler? Or what are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So no, but that's cool. Did you? I don't know. Did you feel? Did you have a lot of grace from your like past clients? Through like having a child and like yeah, because I, I know a lot still, of people still having that. Um, and uh, as bad as it sounds, like sometimes I'm kind of grateful that I have Lucy as not necessarily an excuse, but like 
a legitimate reason mm-hmm. for being like, hey, I, I'm like last week, Lucy was sick all week for a week straight. It was painful because at every moment I was like, God, I'm getting so far behind. Um, but there's nothing I can do. I, I mean, she's priority and um, I can't just like let her suffer. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I had to like hold her almost the entirety of days um, just to comfort her. Uh, so like no editing was getting done until nighttime. And then I'd yeah. be up till 1 a.m. editing and then wake up, do it all over again. Um, That's good though. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you feel like you've had that grace from, from your past clients and people that are waiting on the <clears> edits <throat> and stuff. Just cause like, I think we've talked about it before. God, it's been forever since we've done a podcast, but I feel like sometimes not necessarily our couples, but like just people that get a service in general that takes a while tend to forget that like we are people too. We have lives outside of working. Like when you think about we shoot your wedding, you and I are at a wedding 14 to push in 16 hour days. I was like, that is almost half of a week's worth of work. Like right there, you know? And then sometimes it feels like the expectation is to be like, all right, I want it in a month or I want it. And it's like, we have a lot of, I don't know. It's, it's confusing to see like some people in their stories with like their clients and stuff. And um happy that you've ha- been able to have good couples that are like, yeah, dude, we totally get it. You're a dad, you're a new dad now. Our video, you know, our video can wait. Yeah. I think too, the, when it's weird, the further I get behind, I feel like the longer it takes me to work, like to edit. I don't know why that like is just, uh, just to like probably cause I feel like making that progress in a video, that's what helps you like continue to get in like these flows and stuff is like, okay, I made a little bit of progress tomorrow. Like you can kind of work off that flow. But if you've just been like stagnant, is that the right word? Stagnant? Like still? Like, yeah. If you've just been stagnant for so long, it's hard. It's probably makes it way harder to take that first step and to get, get into get that. Get back flow. into a rhythm. Yeah. But no, daycare is a good thing. I'm sure that'll help you. Yeah, that's huge. Help you get get out of your hole. My my backlog is not nearly as as bad as yours was or is currently, but I mean, I still have a backlog too, but different reasons. Um, I so I too have a backlog, and you know, I have some some edits that I have to do, a handful of them, and I've you know some couples that are waiting on stuff, and obviously, I appreciate their patience. It, it does take time. Uh, but I am actually starting to scale back on my business side of things on, on the wedding side of things. Um, I made a post not too long ago that I will be taking no more than 10 weddings a year, just because I have found like the stress of having 25 plus videos over my head of like my, my couples, my friends, like patiently waiting for me to like get this stuff done. And then obviously like, the, the crafting and how long yeah. that stuff takes, like the stress that that puts on, on someone like puts on me specifically, I don't like it. Um, and obviously I already have like my own mental health battles and stuff. And that just like adds on to that. So, um, I've, hopefully this is a routine that'll work, but now I'll be taking no more than 10 weddings a year. Um, so I can like focus strictly on those clients, those couples, uh, and hopefully, you know, they won't have to wait as long as, you know, 10, 11 months to get there, yeah. to get everything that they, they want out of their wedding film. Um, but also this year I did take a part-time job, um, working for the little lights on the lane team. So shout out Aaron, Jason, and all those people. Um, I'm doing content creation and social media stuff for them. Um, and that's been able to help me be able to take that step back, um, and to take less and less weddings because obviously income is, is, still a thing whether you're doing five or 30 weddings you need you know you need the money to live and survive but yeah i'm curious do you feel like you found because you're doing content for yourself but also for little lights like for us it's easy because we just we need to post content from weddings to show our quality show videos of the wedding just our editing skills as a videographer. But I feel like that's probably not the same for a wedding venue. Do you feel like you found it's completely different? Like you need to focus more on like, I don't know, maybe photos do better 
for wedding venues Instagram or like, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's definitely different. I don't know if I have like a straight answer to how it is. Um, but the one thing about little lights is like everyone is all hands on deck. So like I am part time, everyone else is like salary full time. Um, so obviously I, I only have like 20 hours, 25 hours in my week to do all this. And like content can take a long time. Editing takes a long time. Um, so it's all hands on deck and everyone's super helpful with social media. Like other people are posting, other people are like finding photos from weddings and posting and sharing while like I spend my time, you know, obviously creating like the reels and the videos and stuff, just cause that can take 10 to 20 hours a week in itself doing that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, it. I think we're still trying to, at least I'm still trying to find that ingredient or that ingredient. Yeah. That ingredient, that thing that, that X is, factor. that's separate. Cause like you said with weddings, it's like, what's the wow factor and like the editing, like what's cool. What yeah. kind of music are you using? This is different. I'm like, I have to showcase. We have, sorry, we have to showcase this venue. We have to get people to come in the door to do the tour, to do all this stuff. Um, so it's just, it's been interesting kind of shifting gears and like making different sort of content and working with a team, which I love having people to like collaborate with and talk. Oh, with. absolutely. Um, but yeah, so th there is something different, but it is, it is also the same. It's kind of like, Hey, come look at what we have. What yeah. This could be for you, which it's similar with videos. Like look at what we can make for you. And there's is just look at what we can provide for you. Look at what your wedding could look like sort of thing. Um, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Look at what your wedding could look like. Yeah. But still still trying to to learn that side of the business because I don't only just do the little light stuff. I do like the other companies that they're running and stuff. So, yeah. um, but mainly my priority is little lights and like their restaurants lively and all that. But um, it's a nice, it's like a nice break too from being so focused on like storyline, storytelling and like, crafting a wedding film versus crafting smaller pieces of content trying yeah. and like paying attention to what works, what doesn't work, what gets engagement, what, like what reaches more people. But, um, yeah. Yeah. There was a photographer that I worked with in November who the photography was actually her second, like her part-time job. Her full-time job was a content creator for a company in Des Moines. I'm pretty sure. I'll have to look it up, but it's like a creative company. And she mainly runs their TikTok, who has almost like 600,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I should probably review some of her stuff to see what she's doing that's successful. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, content creation is kind of hard. Yeah, it's, 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 I don't know. I don't know how to explain it because it's like there's so much content that you can get from anything. Like, Obviously, this podcast alone, there's going to be little snippets of, like, there's going to be 20, 30 different pieces of content we could pull from it to make it short form, but it's hard to find, like, okay, but yeah, it's like, you can do this shoot and then get all these pieces of content, but then you have to think, like, what's going to work? Like, obviously, I could just post a video of a bride in a dress, like, flinging her dress, but is that going to get the attention that we're obviously wanting from it? Is that going to get the traffic that we want from it? So, it's just more... I don't know. It's like more thinking. Yeah. <laughs> like with, I feel like with what you and me do with weddings, it's like, Oh, we post on it. Like, it's kind of cool. Like we'll share it. Yeah, exactly. You know, but you have to create it from scratch essentially with the venue. Yeah. And I think the hardest thing to come in from that is like, I've had to learn their brand and their voice versus like over the last five years of doing my own business. Like I've known my band, my brand and my voice. So yeah. Like, and then trying to separate the two can be a little, oh, I believe it. A little tricky, but, um, but no, it's been, it's been good. I like it a lot. I like the team. Obviously you're the one that introduced me to the little, uh, yeah, little, lights, little team, lights, but, um, um, yeah. Yeah. I think I have, I think I only have that one wedding that you're shooting for me there. I think that's the only one, sadly. I need to double check. I might have another one. I think I have two and then two? three, including. Maybe I have another one. I have one in May. but One of the first ones, huh? I, th I think it is the first the first wedding. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of the first weddings we went to last year was in Texas. Um, I'm excited that it uh, 
that edit's coming up next. Um, it? Yeah, it's the next highlight. Um, yeah, that was a. That was like the first travel wedding I think I went to, where I had to like pack small tripods and. It wasn't like a destination, like a yeah type of thing. Um, we were still carrying our big Peter McKinnon bags. Those were nightmares. Um, <laughs> where was that? Was that outside of Austin? Uh, Dripping Springs, I think Dripping is what Springs. it was called. Thanks. We stayed in that little Airbnb. <laughs> the shed. <laughs> Gosh. I miss the shed. Um, And then the next, literally the next wedding, I think was Cabo. Um, Because that was the first weekend of May. That one was really fun. Cabo. Probably definitely my all-time favorite Ca- wedding. Just the whole crew. They were, yeah. everyone was just like, it took us a day to get warmed up to them. But what we got there on like a, did we get there on Wednesday or did we get there on Thursday? Was the wedding on Saturday? I don't remember. I think it was Saturday. We got there like on Thursday. It might've been Friday. No, no. Cause we had like two and a half, two yeah, and a half we had days a day. of doing our own thing. Uh, spent a lot of pesos while we were out there, though. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. We were <laughs> with the funny story. We were at a resort, and obviously, I came with and helped Ben shoot. And Ben told me he's like, "Yeah, it's like a, he thought it was an all inclusive." Yeah, that was all inclusive. All inclusive resort. Um, it wasn't. <laughs> yes. And there was like really no other options for food or anything. We there like was the restaurant there, so we went there <laughs> like every breakfast, every day. <laughs> dinner. <laughs> We got to know the servers and like, gosh, I can't even. Yeah, tell you they how much got us at the very beginning. They walked up to us when we walked in the resort and they're like, hey, would you like a drink? And they gave us the most expensive drink on the menu. Like margarita? Like, margarita. Uh, and uh, we were just like, yeah, that sounds great. And we thought it was like complimentary. Mm. And they gave us this really nice uh, margarita later to find out that it was the most expensive margarita because they, they gave us a bill at the end and we were surprised. Um, gosh, Cabo was a good time. I mean, the, like, like you said, the wedding was really good, but like, it was also just fun. Like we were swimming, we went surfing, boogie boarding, all that stuff. And, um, uh, I, when, I remember when we were surfing <laughs> the thrill, I only, I was only able to ride a wave like one time, but it was on my stomach. The thrill of being able to successfully just glide. It was like riding a bike for the first time. It was so cool. <laughs> it was such a cool feeling. I don't know how to explain it, but like, it's like intense. Cause you're like, Oh my gosh. Like I'm literally riding this wave yeah, yeah, yeah. flying to the shore. Right and you now. like, don't understand how the physics are working, but you're just, it feels <laughs> so smooth. You're just holding on for dear life. You're like, I guess whatever happens happens. Um, I remember when I got to the freaking sand, when it, it literally rolled me all the way in. So like I was out of the water eventually. And I remember getting on the sand and just being like a little kid, like, Oh my God. That was so funny. Let's go. Dude, remember when you had, you, so you had your hat on and then you put the GoPro <laughs> and we were out there just like, obviously trying to swim out there, which brand was new go, brand new go, brand bro. new go, bro. I used it like one time. <laughs> and like with surfing, you obviously have to st- swim out to like the area that's not the shore <laughs> and that was the hardest that was the hardest part by far like the waves just smack you just crush you every time but ben's out there with a hat and a gopro stuck to his hat. just a hat i didn't just, have anything clamped on hat. me or anything just a hat. and people that have surfed before just understand the ocean the waves are not <laughs> simple they're not easy things that <laughs> they smack you but anyway ben goes out there we're both out there I like rode a wave in and then like my back was hurting at the time. So I took a, took a quick break. So I'm just watching Ben go. I see Ben just get smoked by this wave. He goes underwater, loses his surfboard. Everything comes up. Hat's gone. <laughs> no GoPro. And he's super bummed. Cause like, obviously you got that cool shot of you like riding the, the entire wave in and we, you know, we, yeah, thought- nothing more heartbreaking than when you don't have your shot you don't yeah. have your sh- you, you're like it's gone forever we were That's- so excited about that shot we were heartbroken ben ben spent some time looking when and we we chalked it up we chalked i didn't it even off. try that long though because i was like it's, it's gone ocean. yeah it's, it's gone ocean. yeah yeah i was and then what was it like three hours later or something yeah we, we chalked it up as a loss we went to dinner or lunch or whatever spent another 
I think, yeah, we, <laughs> we mentioned to somebody, we're like, yeah, it kind of sucks. We lost our GoPro earlier. And they were like, hey, somebody uh, found a GoPro earlier. <laughs> hat was still gone. No hat. They found my GoPro. The GoPro washed up on the floor. <laughs> they, they took it to where we rented the surfboards from. We and got it still it. worked. Still worked. Used it we, at the wedding the next day. We have the clip. <laughs> we have the clip of you riding in and laughing like a little school girl on the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, that was so fun. This is so fun. But the wedding, too. I mean, the wedding was fantastic. Gosh, yeah. We had that dinner the night before. The rehearsal dinner, the outside area, the cocktail hour, um, and then the, the wedding day, like, on the beach. And they were just so – they were such a chill couple. Their their wedding party was awesome. And that party, man. That We've was. never – I've never stayed at a wedding longer than that wedding. Granted, <laughs> the reception, the party, was literally two steps from our hotel room. Wait, we had a huge thing happen at that wedding. That was huge for us. Well, we thought it was huge. We met somebody. Oh, we met Skater Boy. We met the Skater Boy. The Avril Lavigne song, Skater Boy. Or like, I he guess was a you skater could say... Boy. He said, see you later, boy. He, the man we met, was who the song was about. Yeah, he was dating Avril Lavigne. When that song came out, I'm pretty sure he said, right? Or it came out after. I don't know. He, yeah. so it, it was, they were producing it together, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. And so he's a producer. He now makes his own music. His name is Oliver. Oliver Anthony? Or no, Oliver. I could look it up. Um, <laughs> he's a great artist. Um, let's see if I can find it quick. I remember when we were putting all these clues together and we're like, no way. Yeah, I think it was later. <laughs> yeah, it, it was like, I don't know if it was the day we were going home or because I know you Mark were. Mark Oliver. Mark Oliver. Um, shout out Mark. Probably. His Instagram is I am. Mark Oliver. I am Mark Oliver. Um, yeah, he's a great artist. Um, and I think he was, when did he say it? When did he bring it up? I can't remember because he was out surfing. Was he surfing when we were surfing? Or I just remember seeing him and being like, God, that guy's good at surfing. That was when we were eating dinner and we were just watching yeah. him surf. He was but surf then, and then we I didn't talk to him until after. We talked to him later and then we connected. I was like, oh, he's like a big surfer. And then we just started talking and talked about his past and his musician, producer, all this stuff. And then I, I, now, don't, I don't remember how it came up exactly. I, did he even? I don't even think he mentioned that he was dating her. Did I fi find that out? No, later? he said he was, he recorded with Avril Lavigne or something yeah. like that. And then we went and then like looked, looked on our phones to find all the stuff out. Found, found out, out they were dating. And like the They break. used to skate together around Los Angeles or wherever. San Diego, LA, or San Francisco. Somewhere in California. Somewhere in California. And we kept putting context clues together. And then we found out they were dating, found and out about the breakup. And then found out that the song came out right around all in that time. We were like, oh my gosh, he was Skater Boy. Yeah, and we found like pictures of them two together. and Yeah, so if you ever need some deep research done on some people, <laughs> we're your guys. But yeah, that was huge, being able to meet the Skater Boy. I mean, you were building it up huge, like... We shot, got the coolest shot of our life. I mean, We're that like, is he skater almost, boy. Someone almost died. I mean, the it's, skater it's super, boy? it's super, super dope. I don't know. I thought that was, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, that is cool. Um, but yeah, so we met skater boy. The wedding was great, but man, that party, holy cow. That was probably one of the biggest, <laughs> biggest, longest parties we've ever been a part of. Yeah. Um, like we were out there dancing, drinking margaritas at the end of the night too. I think I was up to like 3 a.m. packing. Yeah, because we had to get out of there. We had one last expensive breakfast <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before yeah. we had to take our take our. Um, I remember room. though, it was weird because our freaking the reception happened five feet from our hotel room. Mm -hmm. Like we literally, you couldn't have gone to bed because it was so loud. Yeah, we had no other choice just to, than to be out there hanging out. At that wedding, though, I remember that was the first time I ever experienced having issues dealing with audio because of language barrier. Like, mm. he spoke Spanish, and I spoke English, and he had a translator, 
but it was almost like it was just like a friend who didn't know anything about audio. So I'm like saying like, hey, this quarter inch isn't working. Do you guys have like uh, an XLR or an RCA? And she was like, um, let me ask. Let me see. And he just like, no, no, no working. Like he, yeah. he's like, no. And it was one of those situations where I didn't have time to try to translate it to him playing charades. Like I had to, to go record. So I just, luckily I had the people mic'd up, but. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah, I mean we got everything we needed, but that that was that was interesting to see too, like the first time in our like wedding filmmaking career where we hit a point where it's like dang, we will hit times where there is a language barrier with things and like um so that was super interesting. Great, great freaking DJ though. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Everyone was on that dance floor. The entire four or five hours the dance floor was open. Yeah, he was incredible at mixing. Um, that was so fun. And then their live musician, too. Oh, he was a party. He was a good time. He was a um, good time. He's incredibly good, too. Let me play his guitar afterwards, but we couldn't find an amp. Yeah, it was we, <laughs> sad I didn't have a piece for him. The wedding ended. The wedding reception ended, and then we were going to continue the party. <laughs> With the live musician, he had like his amp and stuff, but we couldn't find the cord, so we couldn't plug in. So we just ended up calling it a night, thankfully. At like one in the morning. One or, or two. It was like, it was pretty late. Yeah, it was. Oh gosh. That was a good time. I'm excited for, for you to finish finish that wedding, which I'm sure it's coming up too. Yeah. Yeah, that one's, that was, I mean, second. And then just had a pretty traditional rest of the year. A lot of local weddings. Mm hmm. I had a couple ending end of the year that I think like five or six in a row where I was traveling to, but we went um, to, I mean, we went to Mexico again, not too long ago. Merida. Oh my God, we did. Yeah, did you right. forget about that? No, that was the, yeah, that was the end of the year. That was an experience. That was a really, really cool wedding. Deep, deep in like actual Mexican culture, Merida. Like, yeah, there was a, we would have been screwed without my dad. Yeah, we had to bring Ben's dad along because he's fluent in Spanish, so he translated for us. If we did not have him, I think we could have made it, but I think we would have been stressed. We would have been very slow. We would have stayed in the hotel room like the whole time. Yeah, we we, yeah. Shout out Bob. Yeah, that was uh, that was a that was an experience though. Gosh, that was I feel like my first time experiencing probably yours too. I assume like what shock or like well just like that felt like a luxury wedding yeah no i yeah <laughs> like the lighting like they they had separate lighting for uh just to light up the venue mm. like that wasn't part of the venue they hired people to come in and light the venue which was granted wild me it's a bunch of directors filmmakers photographers who oh yeah like, we met somebody which i don't even remember his name lone tree or Lone One Tree Hill, whatever. I don't know. One Tree Hill, the show. Remember the guy that said he was an actor? Oh, oh, uh, Jason we, Momoa. Yeah, we were going. It wasn't Jason. No, Momoa. we didn't meet Jason Momoa, but he, he looked, looked like, like Jason him. Momoa. Uh, we were chatting with him. I can't remember his name. I wish I did because he was he was on a couple. I just like, remember big we, TV shows. We start as soon as we left. We started googling One Tree Hill. Um, J Jason Momoa special guest or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I still don't know who he is, but, but yeah. I'll ask. I'll probably when I get to their teacher, I'll probably ask the couple. Hey, what's this guy's name? Yeah, but their their wedding was full of filmmakers, photographers, directors, actors, everyone. Like it was very the, the best term is it was very L A. Like it was a lot of yeah. Like they're from L A. A lot of the guests from from L A. It was weird. The the groom had his camera there and was taking video. Like Every, everyone had GoPros, yeah. camcorders. I could have gotten out. away with not bringing my drone because someone else brought a drone. Someone had a drone. Everyone had a camera. It, it was wild. So many people were like vlogging. We probably could have left our cameras at home. I know they had the R five C, but someone else had a yeah. camera. Yeah, no, I mean, worst case scenario, if all of our stuff broke, we would have still been able to yeah, provide, he had a gimbal. provide a film. Like, Gosh, that was that was fun. Um, that was a good time. 
Yeah, I'm excited. I'm anxious to get to that wedding. Um, and that venue was crazy. The fact that you d- drive like what ten miles down a one way gravel. Yeah, road, it was like, like a ten mile like high we gonna, or driveway. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like we were gonna run into the cartel or something on that road. It was like, oh my god, where yeah, are we we'll, going? Uh, we'll stick up a picture of what that looked like um, in the edit of what the road looked like. It was crazy, all the potholes and stuff. Yeah, I felt the, like the cartel could have just came out from the sides of the force and just. Literally. Taking us. Yeah, that is not a spot that I would have ever wanted to be alone driving on. But no, it was just a freaking road to this epic venue. Holy cow. Yeah, it was it oh. was really cool. Couple was really cool. Um God, they I remember we were out on the dance floor and they literally got a cake for me. Yes, because it was Ben's birthday. It was my yeah, it was on my birthday, and so they got a cake and they had candles and they played uh Ludicrous birthday, whatever that song is. Oh, 50 Cent, it, yeah, 50 Cent. Uh, um, in the club, yeah, I think oh, so. Shoddy, it's your birthday, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Party like they play that song, brought cake out with candles, and um, yeah, that was a fun experience. Um, but I think it'd be fun to get more of those, but I feel like doing maybe five of those a year would be like my max because. Because what? Yeah, you went to Kentucky. Just dealing you with went to traveling, Virginia. Yeah. getting through customs. We got lucky. Oh, if we were not with your dad, we would have been taxed on every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cu- customs is watching this right now, and they're like, "Hey, <laughs> hey, we were just yeah, we'll we didn't film a wedding out there. We were just we were there for a wedding." Um, yeah, that was Mexico's hard. I and like it's I don't know. You have all these travel expenses that add up so quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and you want to be like nice to the couple and just give them a flat rate and be like, this should, this, this portion should cover my travel. Like with my second, yeah, and all that. Like, but it, like it does, it never does. There's always extra stuff that comes up on top. I think I, cause I think what I did is I, I think I charged like $3,000 for travel. Um, but I don't think that even covered it. I think it was $3,000 just for the plane tickets. Three tickets. Granted, your dad did come. That was kind of on my expense. That like, was more of a yeah. That was more of like we could a, have gotten help. Could have this. saved a thousand dollars, but I think I still with all the with the hotel and the food, and the gas and the still, rental car still would have been over. It was like probably four thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, so maybe forty five hundred. I don't know. I've always wondered like, do we just do a thing where it's like I will send you the travel expense like after the traveling is done. So it's like exactly what you pay. Cause like, obviously you don't want to overcharge them. You don't want to be like, Oh, I, I need $6,000 to travel. And then it costs three. Then you kind of feel bad. I mean, I would, I know there's business people out there that wouldn't, but you want it to be as accurate as possible. Yeah. I think we learned in when I had a Chicago wedding that it's just not re unless you have a driver or you hire a driver to just only drive all day long, wherever you have to go from point A to point B, point C. They're just in charge of pulling off on the side of the road so you can unload your stuff, and then they go park or drive around while you do your shooting, and then they pick you up when you're done. Because the photographer, we realized quickly that we couldn't do that, and we had to ride a bus everywhere or Uber with the photographer, and the photographer just said, we just back charge them like after all the Ubering. I just charge them what Uber, just what I had to sure. pay for Uber. Yeah. Um, and that's how you get around in Chicago for weddings, I guess. Well, when I, I mean, when I had that wedding in Chicago, I brought, I brought my roommate to come with cause I'm like the wedding was, or they were getting ready and doing like the first look and stuff on the side of the city that's close. So the east side of the city, close to the river or the lake. And then the venue was all the way on the other side of the city and it was New Year's Eve, so it was just like nuts, nuts and stuff. So I hi or I brought my roommate along just to drive our car, just to drive my car to get it to places, and um, that was super helpful. Because yeah, we just ended up taking a bus everywhere with with like the wedding party. It would have been impossible to have our own separate car. Yeah, so, like the big cities are they're they're tough with the amount of equipment that we have. Yeah, we're spoiled here in Iowa. Oh, yeah. like we, we just pull up to the front door and just park right there. It gives you a little. It gives you a little like, oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we have we, to like take a lot of our stuff, but like, we have literally acres of space out here. Like, it's yeah, 
I mean, I love shooting in Chicago. It's one of my favorite cities, but it's cool, but it's stressful, man, driving yeah, and it's stress and you definitely have to have an extra, extra, extra pair of hands. But, um, uh, yeah, I remember we went to the rehearsal to, to do some filming and we left before the couple did to get to their rehearsal before them. And we got there. They were literally, as we were still searching for parking, we're like, Hey, we're ready to start our speeches. We're like, dog, hold on a second. We <laughs> haven't even parked yet. Yeah. We had to walk like six blocks or something. It was crazy. Yeah. It's, it's nuts. It would be so much easier to be a photographer out there in like a big city. Cause just a backpack, just your backpack and, and camera Uber, Uber around and on camera flash or something. You're good to go. I wonder they should have a way like to get like hot. Yeah. I guess you could just hire a driver for the day, but like an Uber where it's like, Hey, I need to like pack a bunch of stuff in your car too. And then. Um, that would be cool. A yeah. day, a full day, Uber expense. Can't can't imagine that'd be cheap, but helpful if you have no other option. Yeah, I think I think we both did quite a bit of traveling. Like obviously we went to Mexico twice, Texas, you were in what, Kentucky, Virginia, Chicago for weddings. I had a wedding out in Yosemite, um, which my girlfriend Lauren, that's new. Um, since we've, yeah, had, that's huge. That's a new, new 2023 thing that happened. Shout out Lauren. Shout out Lauren. Your Lauren. My and Lauren. my Lauren. Shout out yeah, my Lauren. Yeah. So too, believe it or not. So I have a girlfriend now. And um, I just said, Hey, if you're going to date anybody, it has to be someone named Lauren. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so Ben's wife's name is Lauren. My girlfriend's name is Lauren. Uh, and it, it does get confusing. Yeah. Not really. We just have to say my Lauren or your Lauren. Yeah. Um, but that's new this year for me girlfriend going great she's great she's awesome but she actually came to yosemite with me um that was, that was like i don't fun. know you weren't able to or I, you were traveling all the time you had a baby blah 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 um i guess i don't know maybe she was just first option because we made a little vacation out of it but yeah yeah out in yosemite filming an elopement out there second one out there that was fun those are those are so much easier than like traveling for a wedding when I, like I would much rather travel for like an elopement because you only oh, need yeah. two tripods three can like you don't need yeah, very small everything because yeah traveling with everything lights tripods audio all of that stuff is like mm, not worth it's worth it but it's almost not worth it yeah I think three to four cameras would be perfect I think I'd four four out there but yeah, now that you've done that, now that you've traveled with Lauren and shot a wedding with her, I'm curious what your experiences are with, like, this is her first. Maybe she'll do some more with you. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe she'll get into it. She's told me a second time, like, I've, since Yosemite. I think, I mean, it was a really great experience. Obviously, she has no knowledge she had no knowledge of filming or anything like before that which is okay she actually came to a wedding that i was helping ben at uh at little lights just to kind of get her hands on the camera kind of thing um no i mean i loved it and then the the fact that we were able to make it a little bit of a vacation afterwards too like we spent two oh, yeah. full days in yosemite after the wedding too just to like hike and go see things i don't know it was, it was super like special experience because with you and me too, what I've found over the years is like when we travel for these weddings, it's hard. Like it's, we go, we work and we come back. And oh yeah. I think people get this expectation with like traveling for work. Like, yeah, it's so cool that we got to go to like Merida, Mexico, like deep Mexico, Mexican culture, all this stuff. But like we were there, we worked and like we, we came back. We didn't yeah. really get to, I mean, we went to Cenotes and that was really yeah, cool. Yeah, it was a little different experience. There were some things we got to do, but like when I travel, I want to go, is that overheating? I don't know. I think it's, they're getting close, it's, but I mean, we also, I think we're done in like 13 oh minutes God, or something. We're wrapping up here. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it, it was just nice being able to like make, take a couple of days after to actually do fun things rather than go work, come back. Um, cause I mean, it is cool that we get to do that for a job, but it's not like we get to experience, it's not like vacation at all. You know, we're working the whole entire time, but yeah, I think my experience, I, I love taking Lauren with me. Um, 
and now Lucy, but I think I've found that the benefit of having another videographer with you, uh, like, so that you can guarantee you'll have someone that's going to help you get good content, and then when you're editing it in post, you're like, thank God I had somebody mm -hmm. there to help me. I would, even if Lauren came with me, I would still pay for someone else to come with me and just say, Lauren, you stay back at the hotel during the wedding. We're going to go shoot this because it's just easier than trying to Teach babysit, babysit someone or yeah. just like just the stress that comes with weddings. It's so much easier to have somebody there with you. Um, it's worth having a, another skilled second shooter there with you. Yeah. It just makes the experience more fun too. And I don't, I, I don't think it's anything my Lauren, see, it's already going to start getting confusing now. I don't think it's anything my Lauren is like actually, she's interested in it because it's what I do. And like, obviously that's just being a good girlfriend. She'll be someone that can help me when I need it. Like she helped me at a wedding when my second shooter backed out last, last yeah. minute. So it's like, it's, I think that's more of the, more of the scenario, but yeah, I definitely see that with like traveling and stuff be like, yeah, you come with, but I'm also going to bring, you know, bring, yeah, ben, you can come, bring, bring but ben if I, bring Ben if I can. Cause like in the end we are there for work. Yeah. That's the thing that Lauren, I'm talking to you, Lauren will be, uh, you're, uh, you're Lauren. Yeah. These locate, these weddings are incredible to go to, but like it's work, which it sucks to say, but like when we go to the when we usually when we land at these locations, unless we go multiple days early, if we go two days before the wedding, then we can maybe take a day to just relax a little bit. But we're still like getting in the focus of that wedding, like prepping. Maybe we go to the rehearsal. Like it's still we're still working. It's hard to enjoy ourselves until maybe Sunday or the day before. I think. The only, I think the exception was Cabo, Cabo for us, just because like we did have like a full day, ascent, not yeah, even a full I mean, day. We had like six hours of to do whatever we wanted, and but still, at, like we had a deadline because like we got to go to the rehearsal after that, and we're you know yeah. So it's just tough finding that that happened. We could do a whole episode on like the probably what people think expectation is, reality, what people think traveling for work is like in, in our career versus like what it actually is. Tra yeah. Traveling is fun. We'll make that an episode. Traveling is fun, but there's a lot of things that I feel like I've learned this year from traveling as far as gear, um, how to shoot differently. Mm. Um, and just, I don't know. There's a lot of things that are different. A lot of stress that's introduced with traveling. Mm. That almost makes local weddings more favorable. Yeah, because it, it's, I think in the end, especially if it's a good wedding, it'll always be worth it, but it will always almost be not worth it too at the same yeah. time. Because, like Mexico, for instance. Because of the stress. Like the customs thing was almost too much. Like I honestly don't know if, if I got another Mexico thing, I would have to really learn more about getting like a beast or like a passport for all my gear because. I would hate that stress of trying to hide everything again. And, uh, well, it's not like if we were hiding it. They, they, they just, yeah. You just walk through and they ask, and you're like, mm. yeah, I don't know. I'd be, if, and especially with these like weddings where you got to go through customs and stuff, I'd really want to minimize my gear even more. Yeah. I'd have to like change my style though. I think it'd just be nice to walk in with two, two cameras call good two cameras, some lobs, and that's, that's all you need. But yeah. But yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're pushing our, our limit on when we've had this rented, but, uh, what yeah. else do we have on there? Uh, I wrote girlfriend, <laughs> <laughs> mastermind, Mexico times two, Yosemite scaling back little lights. Um, Ooh, here we go. 30. I, I wrote 30. Um, quick tip. We'll call this a segment of the, the, the podcast. Quick video tip, quick, quick editing tip, just tips. I'm still trying to figure out what 30. Means. Uh, yeah. So, um, so here's a quick tip for, uh, you wedding videographers or editors or whatever out there. Um, when you're editing, um, in a sequence, take 30 second breaks. 
take 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, make sure you're editing in a 24 frame okay, per yeah. second timeline. Um, so it looks, I don't know how to explain it. It just looks like what your natural eye sees. I don't, I don't know. It's weird though. Cause I'm trying to decide like, maybe we're just being, we're just being like, grumpy old men being like 24 rain for a second is the proper frame rate no i th- it looks better i don't I, know i, th- I, I think I it does by. because I it's i but like I soap operas by. are shot in 30 frames per yeah. second a lot do you of tv watch, is, do you watch soap operas no i don't but tell me this do you notice i feel like i notice a trend do female video do a lot more female videographers shoot in 30 frames per second because other female videographer not shoot i think a lot of them shoot in 60 and they just have a 30 frames per second timeline, so it looks really smooth when it's played back in normal speed. Now, I say like it looks really smooth. To my eye, it looks too smooth. How about It that? looks too artificial. That's what we'll do for our like educational piece for this month, is we'll show the difference between editing on a 30 frame timeline and versus 20. Yeah, I think the only way to do it, though, is to post two separate videos. Because... There's no. no way to show it. Like, e- either the sequence has to be all 24 or all 30. Like, whatever video we post. I guess, you, yeah. So, so we have to have to two separate this posts. versus this. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll do something like that. I don't know. I, I think I've seen some male videographers have the same, like, 30-frame timeline. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I do have a strong opinion that it does look better if you're editing on a 24-frame per second timeline. I'm just wondering, like, did someone do research and were they like, 30 frames is the way to go? Or did they do 30 frames because someone else told them? Or did they open up Premiere Pro and say, create a sequence for me? And it's they just automatic. went with default 30 frames per second. Because yeah. the, in my opinion, the cinematic standard, the Hollywood standard for movies is 24 frames per second not only the hollywood but that is what our naked eye sees yeah so like when we're moving our hand in front of our face we see 24 frames per second we don't see 30 we don't see 60 that's how that's why slow motion works because there's more frames like you can't slow this down unless you're you know obviously doing it like that i'll be interested to see because i think hannah normally does a 30 frames per second timeline but yeah we shot that wedding in 24 frames per second, the ceremony and toasts. We shot that in 24. So she's going to have to edit into 24. I'll be curious to see if we, if she went with 30. Yeah. And if she tries to do it and she's like, why is it choppy? I just, I just don't understand why 30 is a thing. <laughs> There's some kids looking in. Are they next? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I think people that do 30, they just look at it and they're like, I prefer smooth. I know Ryan sometimes likes to post, which I've done this in the past too, posting. Sometimes I will intentionally post a 30 frames per second shot. It might be a drone shot by itself just because of how smooth it looks. Yeah. There but can for be an inten- entire video, I don't know if I'd like that. There can be intention behind it, definitely. I don't know. I mean, it's it's just, it's more of an opinion. I guess it can be a tip. A tip, if you, here's the tip. If you want your film to look more natural, to make it feel more real, like, like the viewer is actually there, then you want to edit in your 24 frame timeline. But if you're looking for that smooth, slow kind of feeling, then 30 frames is the way to go. I don't know. It's it's up in there. Just never add it in a 60 frame, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if you aim do 24, you can even slow your clips down a little more. 20, yeah, 24 just makes the most sense because you can slow everything down. You can keep it regular as it is. You know, just the only benefit I guess you get is that hyper smooth look i don't know i'm not a fan of that look but that's a good point yeah i don't know i'd be curious to see like who learned who like all the people that shoot weddings who learned from who like who learned from what and i'd be just curious to see that because now that i'm thinking about it i think a lot of female videographers 
do do and their, I don't know their so posts, part, I don't know my for some reason I, my first thought is they do it because it's like a identity thing like oh female videographer is shooting 30 frames per second maybe yeah maybe they're just but trying some that's out. the only reason I say that is because maybe they learned from another female videographer that did it but but here's the other thing besides you and me besides people that do this I want, we should do a test. We should like go to random people with two clips and be like, do you, can you see a difference in these two clips? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Do I don't you, know if they can. I don't know if people would really know. So does it really matter? No. Um, yeah. Cause I feel like I have a pretty good eye of, I can, as soon as I watch a video, like if someone shot a drone shot in 30 frames per second and they didn't slow it down on a 24 timeline, I can say this person forgot to slow it down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we also spend every waking minutes editing and staring at that kind of stuff where we do know that, but so, you know, what? it's not a tip. It's not even a suggestion. Do, do whatever you want. But if you're looking for that more Hollywood standard or that naked eye, it's the 23.976, 23.976 frames per second timeline. Um, um, and that, that just, all that will do is like in your clips that aren't slowed down, you'll have motion blur. And you can slow your clips down even further and you can, you know, so. I think it's probably pretty comparable to people that sh- crank their shutter. Shutter versus ND filters. That's a whole, that's a whole other. Yeah. I just, I feel like shooting in 34 or 24, like editing in 30 or 24 is like cranking your shutter using an ND filter. I think to me, there's just something, it just makes it feel like a video. And when I'm editing something, I don't want it to feel like a video. Does that make sense? I want yeah. it to feel like the person watching is there. I don't know. It's it's good stuff. Um, um, I also have improv story. Wait, wait. How about this? <laughs> and, the hypothetical. And, and invention intervention. <laughs> I don't know what either of those things mean. So this is just a thing. Um So this is like creating a hypothetical situation and how you would go about solving the problem. So so let's say you have a couple that comes to you and they're like, hey, we want to we wanna get married on a roller coaster. We want to do our personal vows on the roller coaster. We, we need you to be there to film it. How would you go about filming that? While it's going. While it's literally just looping. How would you, like my, my thought is first I'd have to, Talk to the people that own the roller coaster and be like, hey, can I like mount cameras on this thing? <laughs> yeah. So it, it, then it just becomes a full pre production process. Now, what if there's no pre production? They're literally waiting in line to ride it. Then and you're like, you get on. You are they say, are they mic'd already? They're mic'd? Yeah, they're mic'd. So you get on. I'm going one camera. I'm going, okay. It, are you with me? Are we together? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you and me get in the cart in front of them, obviously. And then we like smart, smart, smart. We hold the camera. For some reason, I was picturing them at the front, and I'm like, God, how would you film that? I'm no, thinking, no, like, you put them sticks. in the back, dude. You, hey, you make sure they're in the back because then you get all the foreground. You can see the. You don't want anybody else in the background. You just want to see them going crazy and the tracks and all this stuff. You put them in the back. We're in the, the car in front of them. They're mic'd. We just turn around and we just kind of. <laughs> We just, we do our best to shoot it. Obviously we like stick a GoPro on like a suction cup if we've got one of them or not, or I don't know. I think that's just a run and gun type of scenario, but that would, that's actually, I, it, I want a couple to do that. Okay. Get married on a roller coaster. Not married. Just <laughs> talk about why you love each other while you're getting whipped around. All hey, what? <laughs> you're the most beautiful guy. <laughs> It's like a 30 second roller coaster. <laughs> so what do we call it? Is that a segment we're introducing? Hypotheticals? Yeah, just hypotheticals. Hypo- just hypothetical. Come up with a random situation. There's another one I saw that was like. Hypothetical. A couple wants to get married in a zoo. Um, what was it? Uh, you're, you're surrounded by exotic animals. Discuss the comedic challenges. <laughs> That it would be to film in a zoo. Okay, so I'm just imagining you're like filming and you're like in the, you're like you're in, in, the, in the pit. <laughs> and the monkeys are like trying to like move the tripods. They're like trying to grab the tripods and so you're like, dude, I like, what I, I would do is I would teach the monkeys <laughs> the, shoe the proper composition that I'm looking yeah, yeah, yeah. for. I'd be like, hey, if you want to do this, 
This is what I'm looking for. They're smart enough. Monkeys are smart enough. Kinda, yeah, that'd be, yeah. I don't know. I in that situation, like, are you like, hey, this is you just have to go handheld, and then you have like one on a try. Like, you have to have a man on each camera. Yeah, yeah. Or a or a monkey that knows what it's doing. I guess I don't. The one thing that I've always I'm so concerned will happen is someone is going to do a ceremony with, it's like a circular ceremony. And I'm not going to re- figure out, like, it's such a big circle, it's hard. I'd have to, like, rent 400 millimeter lenses or something to try to figure out where I want to place cameras to compose the shot. I feel like it'd just be tricky. Like, you can't, yeah. like, it'd be hard to do a wide angle. I don't know. Just a drone shot from the top. Or, like, the you've seen those aisles where, like, the seats face the aisle. It's one long aisle. Like, where do you put your cameras? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. There, There's a lot of trends. The one that scares me the most right now, I don't know why it scares me, but it's uh, brides' dresses that have slits in them. I've come in the last six months, I've, I've had more trouble with miking dresses than I've ever had because of slits or because they're, like, paper-thin mm-hmm. dresses. Um, luckily, everyone, I've only had one dress that didn't work. But I think I've had about three. If you're an engineer, we need your help yeah, to come, make a mic for a bride. Come Take on. Take the components of a mic that we have and just shrink it into a size that can go inside of a dress. Like in, like it's like a little piece of fabric. Yeah. Just something. That can go on the inside liner of the top part of the dress or something. Just something that like can clip to something or just something so small. Oh. That has like a 12 hour battery life. Even if you have to put a AAA battery in there, I don't know. Like, literally, it could be the size of a battery. You just, and then you just clip it. Like, obviously, you want it to be thin or not. I don't know. I don't know. There, I feel like there would be a way, but obviously, we have no idea what we're doing when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, engineers out there, um, come along. This could be a huge thing. Wedding. So many wedding videographers would buy this. Probably I can every, tell you this. every single. Just person. give me like a little Sony TX660 mic, but make it a little bit smaller and a little bit thinner. If it it's a little bit longer, that's okay. But it just needs to be able to be hidden. It'd be really nice if it could just attach to the bra pad or something. Mm-hmm. Um, with 32 bit float. Even something like skin tape. And you can just yeah. tape it to their skin or something. And there's just, just something we could make so much. And then you can make that for grooms and stuff too. And I get, I'm sure it's just a technical nightmare trying to engineer something like that. Cause you're asking for 12 hours battery, but something's really small and I, something that has 32 bit float. Like I, it's crazy. It would be a huge hit though. So yeah, it would be, so it'd be a big money maker. Let's, let's come, come just, chat. If you think you can make something like that. Well, I just don't know the steps involved in trying to manufacture something like that. Like, no clue. Um, yeah. So what are we, so that's a, we'll do a segment where we do a hypothetical situation or something. Hypothetical, hypothetical. uh, Hyper, crunchers. (laughs) (laughs) Hypothetical crunch time. No. Well, I mean the, thing was like they're getting crunch, on, uh, they're getting on the roller coaster it's crunch, crunch ethical or crunch crunch hypothet hypothetical crunch hypothetical crunch Hypo- i think hi- hypothetical crunch time hypothetical crunches hypothetical let's call it hypotheticals <laughs> creative hypo hypo what are we- we've said it so much i don't hypothetical doesn't sound like a word to me anymore hypothetical hypothetical, hypothetical? that happened hypothetical. with me with color grading recently i was staring at a clip so long that i was like does it even look good anymore? I saw you post it. Yeah. Like yeah. So, okay. So, twenty twenty four. Um, we've got kind of one goal, and I'm a broken record saying this over and over again, but we're gonna try to be more consistent. Um, we're shooting for two podcasts a month, and I think just every other time we've been a little too ambitious with one a week. I think we're doing two a month. Every third episode, we're going to try to have a guest on. And then once a month, we're going to post. 
None. Go on. Yeah. Every th- every third episode, we're gonna try to post, or every once a month, we're gonna try to post some sort of educational type of thing regarding video. But yeah. So now that we're gonna be consistent, do we want to stick to the ending the episodes with the uh, what's inspired us? Or do we want to do something else? Um, it can be kind of like a show and tell sort of situation. Show and tell on a podcast where so we don't necessarily just, have to show. It's tell. It's a, it's a tell or tell. Creative crunch tell. <laughs> tell tell crunch. Crunchy yeah, tell. Yeah, just something that happened. Maybe something inspired you. Maybe. Um, so just something. Something. Yeah, just tell or tell. 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 <laughs> okay, then tell me. <laughs> tell, tell me. Oh, we could call it tell me something because you and I do that all the time. Like, tell me something. Um. Uh, tell me something. <laughs> Maybe we need to stick to what's inspired us. I don't know. Tell. I mean, how about this? So, I don't know about you, but I I'm starting to prefer shooting in C log three, which is a new experience for me as a wedding videographer, and I'm kind of enjoying it because it's like a new challenge, and I'm seeing the benefits of it finally. So. My, one of my goals for 2024 is to master C-Log 3 um, and just becoming even better at color grading and sound design um, so I can get better weddings. Like I think one thing I really want to get in 2024 is a C70 or a camera that has a better dynamic range, something mm-hmm. that has 15 plus stops of dynamic range, which C70... Is like the highest camera with the like even more than the FX3. I think that's my that's a good goal. That's my goal too. I was watching a video like Jay and Max video where them shooting on C70 and their footage looks so smooth. So and they shoot handheld and I'm like, do we even need IBIS? I don't know. Um, maybe IBIS is the problem. Maybe it's crippling us. But I want something with better dynamic range and I just want to get the max out of my camera. Yeah. Um, I think I might be done shooting with the monitor for a while. It comes in clutch in the summer during like the ceremony, mm-hmm. but I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of the overheating. I, I too like C log three. I have a little bit more of a hurdle with it being colorblind, but, uh, I've been shooting more and more in C log as well and trying to work with it. And I don't think I'm where there's something, there's something that I want to look at with you later, but it's, it's this little portable color checker thing. And, um, I mean, yeah, you'd have to take it for weddings, but you literally just, like, you flip it out really quick. And when you're color grading in post, you just take a mask and put it over the box colors, and you it's literally like a map, so you can make your colors perfect without going mm-hmm. by eye. I, um, yeah, I'd be interested to see that because that is my, my biggest hurdle as a filmmaker is color for me. And then... When you introduce C log three, I just feel like you're you have a lot more room for error too. But you also have a lot more room to fix something. So, you know, there's benefits to both. But I've been doing it. I've been trying it. I like it. I'm not I'm not comfortable with it. I don't think as quite as you are yet. But um my thing, tell my tell. My show and tell my tell and tell is Mm. I finally have that feeling again with editing this last teaser I did. I finally had that feeling again of like that rush of like really? while editing, you just see where this is going. When you're done, you see like the feedback you get just, I find it's been so long since I've had that. Like the best word to I describe feel is a rush. That's the, the first time in like almost the entire year where I've been like, Oh, that felt good. That's always to a make. good feeling. That felt good to make. I I'm proud. Like I'm proud of it. I'm proud of all my videos. Like I do put every ounce of effort and creativity I can into each one. But I finally hit it, and it's like God. Oh, that this is yeah. why I do it. I enjoy doing this. I could do a thousand more like that now. I don't know why that ebbs and flows so much. Yeah, I don't know how you. Can how do you get it to be consistent? Yeah. How do you get it to be consistent? I don't. I don't know if it's music. I don't know if it's 
like specifically the couples of the day. I don't, I don't know, but it just felt good. I was like, gosh, I love doing this where I, I enjoy doing it all together. But I was like, I love this. Like I was excited to, yeah. to wake up the next day and work on it again. And so that was a good feeling. I need, I definitely needed that. Yeah. That we need that push, more, especially coming into, you know, the slower season with strictly just editing and way less shooting. So, yeah, no, I feel you. That's, that's always an incredible feeling. And one gets you excited to do it mm. each day. Um, well, yeah. Cool. So that, I mean, that went okay. That was a little rusty. It, it had been a while, but, uh, there we hope this will come out in 2024, but, uh, hope you had a good Christmas. Yeah, Christmas and New Year. Uh, yeah, we'd love you, to know what your guys' goals are. Yeah, hope you have a happy New Year. If you're someone that sets goals for the New Year, let us know. Got a couple personal, but I don't, you know, not someone to share those. But the podcast, I think we're, we've kind of like, let's see. Let's actually do it. Because we've always had the excuse if we have other stuff we got to do. I mean, this last year was a good a good excuse. But now it's like, why why are we not? So. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. But hope you had a good Christmas, good New Year. Um, we'll see you when we see you. So, peace and blessings. You know what though, I am really gonna miss the random. I wanted to the random stuff. I mean, that, it's that still common that you're inspired by. We could still do it. I don't know. We'll see. But then we're good. We've been going <laughs> one hour and a half here, but. Um, yeah, so thanks for listening and watching the Creative Crunch podcast. Uh, yeah. We're excited to be back. Shout out, Travis. Shout out, Travis. Shout out, Travis. Shout out, Travis. Travis, let us know when you want to come on. Yeah, come on. Come, come on. Maybe let him know your next move. <laughs> <laughs> Just ready. Ready. Okay, okay. All right, peace. Wait, wait, wait.